Welcome to the Vacuum Excavator Operator Safety Training Program. The intent of this video is to introduce industry best practices for safe operation when using vacuum excavation equipment. Following these practices will also help prevent damage to equipment, utilities, and property. This video is not a substitute for the operator's manual. Read and understand all manuals and other information affecting safe machine operation. The electric lines in this video have been de-energized. This program is co-produced by AEM, Ditchwitch, GTI, Great All Vac All, Planet Underground, Ramvac, Vector, and McLaughlin Vermeer. Vacuum excavation, also called soft excavation, is a means of soil extraction through vacuum using pressurized water or air for loosening soil. Vacuum excavation is a viable, efficient means of soil removal with less ground disturbance, potentially lower costs, enhanced safety factors, and greater protection for underground utilities. You may hear terms like keyholing, potholing, or locating when people talk about vacuum excavation. Vacuum excavation is typically not done with sewer cleaning equipment, which uses much more water than vacuum excavation equipment and can cause surface undermining unless properly equipped. Always call your local one call prior to excavation and comply with any federal, state, and local regulations. Misuse of this equipment can lead to property damage, serious injury, or even death, as well as damage to underground utilities. Familiarize yourself with your equipment and its proper operation. Read, understand, and follow all operating and safety manuals provided with your vacuum excavation equipment. Obtain replacements if any manual is missing. Understand the safety messages and symbols in the manual and on the equipment. This program will address the following areas. Operator safety. Equipment inspection. Transporting equipment to and from the job site. Before you start on the job site. Operation and maintenance of vacuum excavation equipment. And finally, finishing the job. You can review and download helpful materials such as checklists and tailgate sheets at AEM.org. Follow all applicable regulations for your region. Be sure to heed any location-specific restrictions placed on equipment and its use by the facility owner or operator. Symbols you must recognize and obey include this safety alert symbol that calls your attention to the possibility of personal injury or death. You must be alert and physically capable of operating the equipment. Never operate equipment while under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Wear all personal protective equipment specified in the operator's manual. In most vacuum excavation applications, the following personal protective equipment, or PPE, should be used. A hard hat. A high visibility shirt, vest, or jacket should be worn on every job site. Vacuum excavation equipment has moving parts and suction, so to avoid an entanglement hazard, wear work clothes that fit snugly and tie up long hair. Vacuum excavators or air excavators cause dust and can throw gravel, stones, or other debris, so be sure to always use safety glasses with side shields or goggles and whenever necessary, a full face shield. Vacuum excavator job sites can be very noisy, Use hearing protection, such as earmuffs or earplugs. Protect your body with garments that completely cover you and provide reasonable protection from the impact of rebounding or thrown object debris. Wear water-resistant clothing when operating water jet equipment. Wear cut-resistant gloves that provide water protection. Wear waterproof steel-toed boots with metatarsal guards. Shin guards are recommended. If excavating around electric lines, contact the energy company to de-energize the line. If the line cannot be de-energized, wear electrically insulated gloves and boots while on the job site. Wear respiration equipment appropriate for the job site. 
This may vary due to the chemicals used, materials being excavated, and the adequacy of fresh air available at the job location. For procedures using hydrovac excavation in the vicinity of electric distribution lines, see the E and USA Safe Practice Guide, Excavating with Hydrovacs in the Vicinity of an Underground Electric Plant. Before beginning any job, familiarize yourself with the equipment. Perform a walk-around to make sure the equipment is in proper working condition. Refer to your operator's manual for the manufacturer's recommended checks. Never go under any raised component unless it's properly supported according to the operator's manual. The component could fall and crush you. The manual will instruct you on the proper use of safety devices like lock valves, pins, or retaining arms. Inspect the hydraulic and water jet hoses according to the instructions in the operator's manual. Visually inspect for fluid leaks. If you must pressurize the system to find a leak, Never use your hand to detect a leak, even if you're wearing gloves. If you suspect a leak but cannot see one, follow the instructions in the operator's manual for leak detection and repair. High pressure fluid can be invisible and can be injected into the body through the skin. Serious injury or even death can result. If an accident occurs, get immediate treatment from a doctor familiar with this type of injury. Check that all scheduled maintenance has been performed, especially lubrication of rotating parts. Check the brakes and steering systems of the vacuum excavation equipment. Do not operate if the brakes or steering controls are not functioning properly. Check that the headlights, brake, and signal lights are clean, visible, and in good working condition. Warning lights must be clean and working. Inspect all tires for damage and recommended inflation and make sure the lug nuts are tight. Make sure all equipment guards and shields are in place. Check for holes, tears, openings, or worn areas that could allow objects or fluids to pass through. If worn or damaged, they must be replaced. Use only replacement components specified by the manufacturer. Other parts may not be suitable for your vacuum excavation equipment and could fail or reduce performance. When moving the vacuum excavation equipment to and from the job site, the following precautions must be taken. Make sure the tow vehicle is rated to handle the weight and size of the vacuum excavator, along with full water or spoil tanks. Consider the effects of water sloshing when sizing the tow vehicle. Drivers must comply with all federal, state, and local regulations. A commercial driver's license may be required. When transporting hazardous materials, ensure the equipment is approved for such use. Follow all applicable regulations in your region. It's important to identify buried utility lines. Contact your local one-call or one-call referral number to have underground utilities located before working. Also contact any utilities that do not participate in the one-call service. One call may not identify private utilities, sewer lines, or retired utility lines, so you may need to hire a professional locating company to locate private utilities. Do not proceed with vacuum excavation until locating has been completed and all items are marked. Note: Some states allow the use of vacuum excavation without locates. Inspect the job site perimeter for evidence of underground hazards such as utility signs and other underground facility notices, gas or water meters, junction boxes, drop boxes, light poles, manhole covers, sunken ground or old locate markings. Inspect the worksite for surface and overhead hazards, such as overhead power lines, overhead tree limbs, on surface structures, utility poles or other structures that may need to be supported manholes, inspection plates, signs, and trenches and drop-offs. Ensure that no part of the equipment or boom gets closer than 20 feet to the power line. It's recommended to have a spotter to help ensure a safe distance is maintained. If exposing an underground utility, contact the utility owner to determine precautions that need to be taken based on materials used, the age of materials, and potential hazards associated with those materials. 
Buried hazardous materials may require additional safety equipment or treatment. Consult an expert in these matters. If working on a roadway, follow required temporary traffic control measures. Use job site controls, such as cones and barricade tape, to limit bystanders from entering potentially hazardous areas in proximity to machinery. When preparing the equipment for operation, place wheel chocks under the wheels. A potential combustible dust hazard may require additional safety measures. Consult your manufacturer for their recommendations. To dissipate static electricity, ground the equipment per the manufacturer's recommended procedure. When working in confined spaces, be sure to take precautions. Test the atmosphere for oxygen. Follow all facility, state, and OSHA confined space regulations. Note, a permit may be required. If a permit is required for space entry, follow OSHA CFR 1910.145-146. The safe exposure of underground facilities within the tolerance zone is essential to damage prevention. Site conditions may make the use of hand tools to expose underground facilities difficult or impractical. Vacuum excavation, when used properly, is an efficient, safe, and effective alternative to hand digging within the designated underground facility tolerance zone. However, many underground facility owners and operators have specific criteria for safe excavation and exposure practices around their facilities. When exposing utilities, the equipment should only be operated by a worker trained and experienced in its operation. They must be familiar with the practices which provide appropriate levels of worker and public safety and should know the proper procedures to prevent damage to buried facilities. Only use equipment designed for excavation work. Some sewer equipment is not designed for excavation work and should never be used for this purpose. Always review and follow the operator's manual and other safety information for proper application and intended use. Familiarize yourself with the different types of tubes, hoses, fittings and clamps, pressure lines, and vacuum lines approved for your equipment. Verify the functionality of all safety relief valves. Always hold a vacuum hose end away from your body or anyone else. A major hazard associated with this type of equipment is suction. Use the proper hose end attachment. It only takes seconds to kill or injure a person. Remember, you're dealing with water or air at very high pressure. Follow all safety instructions to prevent damage to yourself, your co-workers, and utilities. Pressurized air and water wands can cut or injure so be sure to keep the nozzle away from your body. Specific wands and nozzles are designed for use with this type of excavation equipment, so only use accessories approved for use with your particular equipment. Use caution when working within the tolerance zone. Keep air and water wands in motion at all times while excavating to minimize the risk of damaging the utility. Using a rotary nozzle reduces the risk of damage to underground facilities. Never insert the nozzle into the subsoil while excavating within the located utility's tolerance zone. Keep the pressure one nozzle at least 8 inches away from the underground facility and or subsoil. Use recommended water volumes. Normal application is under 10 GPM. To help avoid damage, Use as low a pressure as needed to break up the soil. When pressurized water wands are used, the maximum recommended water pressure to be used with a straight tip nozzle is 2500 PSI. The maximum recommended water pressure to be used with a rotary nozzle during excavation is 3000 PSI. All pressure measurements are to be monitored using a pressure gauge mounted on the excavation machine. If water is heated, reduce the pressure accordingly. When vacuum excavating, avoid using excess water volume or pressure to prevent erosion or undermining of roadways, utility poles, or other structures. If damage occurs to underground facilities or coatings while excavating, the facility owner or operator 
must be contacted immediately. When excavation work is complete, the job is still far from being done. All tools, hoses, tubes, and other items must be removed from the work site and placed in their proper storage location. Use the unit's water system or other source to wash down any tubes, hoses, and any other areas that may have mud or rocks on them. If the excavation must be left open and unattended, it must either be barricaded or covered with materials of adequate load rating. If the hole is to be filled in, the final surface must be flat and free of material that could cause a hazard. Before transporting the equipment, perform a pre-trip inspection to ensure all hoses, tubes, clamps, and other items are secure. Follow all state and local regulations for proper disposal of spoils. Review the guidelines for safe transport of sloshing materials. Dump and clean the debris container at the end of the work shift and between jobs at an approved dumping site to prevent cross-contamination. At the dump site, ensure that the unit is placed on level, stable ground with no overhead obstructions. Follow the manufacturer's instructions to decant fluids and open the container door. Make sure the area around the rear of the unit is clear of personnel when opening and closing the door and raising and lowering the debris container. Only open the door when the container is in the lowered position. Never move equipment with the debris container elevated. Doing so could damage the equipment or cause the unit to tip over. Always use body and door safety props when cleaning or working around the unit. The debris container may be considered a confined space. When working inside the debris container, take the necessary precautions. Before leaving your equipment, follow the manufacturer's shutdown procedures. Always place the transmission in the park position, set the parking brake, shut off the engine, remove the key, and block the wheels. This will prevent the vacuum excavation equipment or from use by unauthorized persons. If you're done for the day or changing sites, drain all the water out of the water tanks, lines, and water pump. If the ambient temperature might be below freezing, follow the manufacturer's recommended procedures. Ensure that hoses, pipes, and other equipment are properly stored on the unit. If the equipment will be shut down for an extended period of time, disconnect the battery. Compare mileage and hour meter readings to the maintenance schedule to see if maintenance is required. Thank you for watching this program on safety practices for vacuum excavation equipment. This important information is intended to help reduce the potential for serious personal injury, downtime, machinery repair, and damage to property and underground utilities. Make safety procedures an important part of every workday. Awareness and attention to safety will not only help protect you, but also the people around you. Manufacturers of this type of equipment contributed to the development and presentation of this video to help you develop good safety practices and make you a better vacuum excavator equipment operator.